Hello friends, welcome back to Mycology Exploration. In this video, I'm going to show you in real time, no edits, what it's like when I create substrate. This is our simple 50-50 cocoa vermiculite substrate with just a little bit of gypsum. And I want to show you exactly how I get this started. And then there's going to be a part two where I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished because I'm going to need both hands here in a little bit. So here's how I prepare getting started creating substrate. It's interesting because a lot of people have expressed how substrate is the most difficult part of growing mushrooms for them. And for me, I feel like it's the easiest. Now, maybe this is because I'm also an organic gardener. So your substrate is your soil. And I also want to bring up this. <laughs> we delete any and all negative, rude comments. End of story. We are only here on YouTube and we are only sharing what works for us. We're not here to make money. We're not here selling a thing. We're simply here being a part of the incredible mycology community and people that love fungi and mushrooms. We've had great success with so many different types of mushrooms. We have cloned. We know what works for us. However, we have incredibly hot summers, 110 degree summers for months, along with freezing winters. When you grow mushrooms, even though it's indoors, and maybe some of you are growing outdoors, we grow inside and outside. But when we grow indoors, the outside temperature absolutely determines what's going on with the mushrooms. It's all about temp temperature and moisture. And until you're standing in the environment of somebody growing their mushrooms, you have no idea the moisture that is required. So I just want to say we love the mycology community, but if you're new here, there are some really rude, know-it-all kind of people. And trust me, we hear from them in the comments, but we simply delete their comments because they're not correct. Life is a choice. How you grow mushrooms, there are so many choices. And where you live, your weather, your temperature, your moisture, the humidity, does make a difference when you're growing mushrooms. <laughs> it just does. Your air quality. We're standing right here in my kitchen. The air quality in your home, if you're growing mushrooms in home, is important. So the temperature, the moisture, all plays a role. So the substrate that we create in the summer when it's 110 degrees compared to the substrate that we create when it's freezing and it's winter, totally different when it comes to the moisture. Some mushrooms we would not even attempt to grow when it's freezing outside. Some mushrooms we wouldn't even attempt to grow if it was 110 degrees outside because we're not a commercial grower. We do not have tents and rooms and environments where we control the temperature and the moisture for each type of mushroom. Now, I am really passionate about sharing this with you because I just think there is some wrong information from people that they think they know it all and they simply do not. So I want to say this, when you go here on YouTube and watch videos from the fantastic mushroom growers that are commercial and they have these amazing tents or environments where they can control the temperature, the humidity, the moisture, and they have different types of mushrooms in each of these tents. Each of their tents, their environments are going to be dialed in the temperature and the humidity, the moisture for each type of mushroom. So the amount of moisture in your substrate is going to be different. When you become really experienced like us, there are some types of mushrooms that want a wetter environment, a wetter substrate, and some not so much. 
we have the experience to know along with the types that we're growing. We don't share the types that we're growing in these videos because it doesn't matter. We're just giving information on what simply works for us. So I'm using purified clean water in every step of growing mushrooms, every single step. And so what I've done here is I've heated this to 100 degrees and we are going to pasteurize our substrate to 140 degrees. However, I'm going to slowly allow the water in the substrate to move up into 140 degrees. So I've got a thermometer here. I'm going to monitor the temperature, but I am going to start with some water here. That's 100 degrees. So let's talk about filled capacity with your cocoa. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and turn my stove top to a medium. Now I know my stove top and my medium is going to heat this up so I can heat my very thick pot. <laughs> and I only use this pot for mushrooms. We use this for our bird seed, for our substrate. We only use this for mushrooms. It's a large pot. I can do this entire brick. So what I'm gonna do is start with just a little bit of water in the bottom of my pot because it's already getting warm. It's on medium heat. And then I'm gonna simply add my brick. Now again, I don't need to keep this stuff sanitary, sterilized, because we're gonna pasteurize our substrate. And when you pasteurize, and this goes for a lot of food as well, when you bring it to 140 degrees, you've killed any contamination. So you can see already what's happening to this cocoa brick. This is called bringing it to filled capacity. You can see how it's already absorbed the water at the bottom. And again, this is on medium heat. I apologize for the focus. I'm gonna lock that for you. This is in real time. You guys asked me for real time. I'm gonna turn my dial down because I don't wanna cook it. Now I know my stove top here. Again, this is a hundred degree water that I heated in my kettle. You do not have to heat the water. You can use room temperature water if you would like. Again, we only use purified clean water. Some people use distilled water. Okay. You can see how much this has already expanded, how quick this is. This is, again, bringing your cocoa to filled capacity. Now, if we were not creating substrate for mushrooms, we could simply go ahead and use our cocoa without bringing it to 140 degrees. But we're creating a substrate for mushrooms. So we're gonna to want to pasteurize to 140 degrees. We're also gonna be adding this vermiculite. Now, as you can see, actually, I don't know if you can see, this vermiculite is covered in dust. There you go. It's covered in dust and dirt. There's been a run on vermiculite. Things have really changed with vermiculite and we didn't need a whole lot. You can buy it in bulk, but this came from this outdoor home grower kind of mom and pop shop, and he stores these outside. Again, this is another reason why we would need to pasteurize. So when you bring your cocoa, your vermiculite to 140 degrees, you've pasteurized and you don't have to worry about the contamination. Now you can see here, how much it's already soaked up the water. And I'm gonna keep pouring in, I still have my stove on. And 
and I'm going to over water because the vermiculite is going to adsorb 40 times, 40 times its weight. Vermiculite holds 40 times its weight in water. This is vermiculite we're gonna be adding. And so I just really wanna show you what's happening. This is filled capacity on one brick. So we're gonna have an overwatered filled capacity cocoa brick. That's what we want because our vermiculite is gonna soak up 40 times its weight in this water. The vermiculite holds the moisture. So let's talk about vermiculite because we've gotten some crazy comments over vermiculite and people are actually angry. <laughs> it is, <laughs> knowledge is power, it's empowerment. When you have the knowledge and the wisdom research, find out for yourself, find out for yourself. <laughs> Vermiculite. There was one manufacturer of Vermiculite that had an asbestos problem. Vermiculite is not asbestos. There was one manufacturing plant, one nursery that had a problem way back years and years ago. So don't use old vermiculite. <laughs> know where you're getting it from. I would rather buy my vermiculite indoors, but the place where we usually buy that, they were out. And so we went to this mom and pop and they store it outside and that's okay. So here's what, here's what I'm going to do because it's covered in dust and dirt. I'm going to go outside and I'm going to cut this open and there's tons of particulates with vermiculite. So I'm going to go cut it open outside. And then I'm going to come back on and I'm going to turn on my vent. I'm going to turn on my vent. So we used to create substrate in crock pots out in the garage when we first started. But now I am so experienced and it's so easy for me <laughs> that I can do it right here on my stovetop and I change my air filters I keep my air really clean. My home is very clean. And so I sterilize, sanitize, and I'll do it again. And I'll turn on my AC fan and my vena hood here when I pour the vermiculite. So I'm going to do that off camera. And then I'll come back and do a part two for you showing you what it looks like. And I'm going to show you how much water is going to be in here. There's going to be so much more water because everything is going to be swimming around swimming around and I'm going to stir, 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 and I'll show you what it looks like. And we're also going to be adding one tablespoon of gypsum for pH balance. You don't have to, but it works for us. We have had such great success with this 50, 50. I do 50% cocoa, 50% vermiculite and I don't weigh it. I don't measure it. I just do it by eye. And again, I have so much experience with our recipes and what works for us. And again, we grow, we don't have problems growing mushrooms. So if there's something in one of our videos that you see over moistured substrate, maybe we're storing that for a couple of days or a week before we use it. Because you can do that. You can create your substrate 140 degrees pasteurized and then you can leave it in a bucket we use we use tubs with tops and we put it in a cabinet so if i know i'm not going to use that substrate for a couple of days or a couple of weeks i will actually leave more moisture in it And it works for me. So I use one brick of cocoa for about half a bag of vermiculite. 
and one tablespoon of gypsum for pH balance. Again, it works for us. It works for us. We have so much success and we grow so many different types of mushrooms. Again, you could use this outdoors if you wanted. It's a simple 50-50. And the moisture is going to be based on what kind of mushrooms, what your temperature, your weather, and your humidity is. And so if you're growing in colder temperatures, less moisture, strain out more of the water. So you can go back and see our pillowcase method. I talk about the pillowcase in many videos because we think it is a brilliant, easy way to strain your substrate. The pillowcase becomes your colander, your strainer. And we only use a specific pillowcase, just like a specific pot for mushrooms. So we have a pillowcase that we sterilize and sanitize. So after I'm finished here and it brings, we bring it to 140 degrees, I will let it cool overnight with the top on. So once it hits 140 and I'll show you in part two, I'm going to put the top on, I'm going to move it off of the stove top to the side and let it cool overnight. And then we will pour it into our pillowcase in a five gallon bucket out in the garage or outside. And my pillowcase will be sterilized and clean and we will strain that. So we will squeeze it, right? Twist the top of the pillowcase, allow all the water to flow out. And when no more water is dripping out, then you can put it in your buckets or your bags ready to go. It's so easy. And again, the substrate, the moisture, every single thing comes down to what type of mushroom and where you're growing, your environment, the, the weather, the humidity, the temperature, the moisture, it all matters. So if you're at home, your outdoor temperature matters, your indoor temperature matters. It is incredibly difficult to have success when you're heating but when you're cooling, it's much easier. So summertime, right, where, where you're running your air conditioning or cooling is a better environment for the mushrooms. You really don't want to heat or cook. So we have way more success in the spring, summer, and fall, the, the warmer months. And we actually have some mushrooms that thrive in the heat. They do really well. Some mushrooms do really well in the cooler temperatures. So you really have to understand the type of mushroom. So there are choices and there's questions to be asked when you're growing mushrooms. And I'm really passionate about this based on some of the comments that we're receiving. And it's interesting to me because some of these comments are from people that claim that they have been growing mushrooms forever. <laughs> And if you've been growing mushrooms forever, then you clearly know that when you're growing mushrooms from home, you're, when you're a home mycologist, then everybody's environment is different. And if you don't know what type of mushrooms being grown, then you have no business commenting on moisture <laughs> and substrate. And that goes for if you're learning and you're new, that moisture content is going to be determined on what type of mushrooms you're growing. Research. This is why we have this YouTube channel is offering just another suggestion. Everything that we have shared works for us. We have so much success. And so we think it's hilarious and we laugh when we get these comments from people telling us, oh, your jar is contaminated. Oh, your substrate is over moisturized. Really, because we grew phenomenal, amazing mushrooms, <laughs> whether they're gourmet or medicinal. And we just want to encourage you to not get caught up in this way or that way, right or wrong. You can use 91% alcohol if that works for you. If you want to use 70%, use that. What works best for you in your environment? Again, your temperature, your environment matters. I'll see you in part two.